Welcome to Universal Recap. Today, I'm going to recap an epic film from 2011 named, War Horse. The movie begins with an aerial shot of the hills and valleys of Devon, England, which then zooms down to a field where three men are tending to a horse on her side. It is the year 1914, and young Albert Narricot is watching the scene from a fence. It becomes apparent that the horse is about to give birth, and the next shot is of the newly born foal, which stands up. The film then shows Albert attempting to befriend the young horse as they both grow up. When the horse reaches adulthood, the three men take him to the village to be sold at an auction. Albert's father, Ted Narricot, becomes immediately enamored with the horse and bids on and wins the animal using his rent money. Ted brings the horse home, and Albert starts to bond with and train the horse, which he names Joey. The landlord comes for the rent and agrees to wait until the harvest if Joey can plow a rocky field, which will then be planted. Albert attempts to put the collar on Joey, but the horse refuses. To demonstrate how easy it is, Albert puts the collar over his own neck, and Joey takes the collar without any problem. The entire village comes out to watch as Albert tries to get Joey to plow the field. At first, it is a complete failure. Then it starts to rain, and as the water softens the ground, Albert tries once more. This time, the plow bits into the ground, creating a furrow as Joey pulls in a straight line. Soon the field is completely plowed, and Ted goes out to plant it. At the same time, war is looming, and Albert and his mother have a talk about Ted's service in the 1899-1902 Boer War and how he refuses to talk about it. War is declared, and a terrible storm destroys the crop that was planted. With the rent coming due, Ted takes Joey down to the village to sell him to the army. Captain Nichols buys Joey for his use in the cavalry. Albert arrives in the village too late to stop the sale, but Captain Nichols says he will return Joey after the war. After being transferred to France, Captain Nichols and Joey are introduced to another horse named Topthorn, who is Major Stewart's mount. During training drills, Topthorn and Major Stewart were always the fastest. However, during a simulated cavalry charge, it is Captain Nichols and Joey who cross the field first, surprising everyone. The cavalry is then sent to attack a German unit, which is twice their size. Major Stewart believes that surprise and the speed of the cavalry will give the British an advantage. The charge begins well, but as the German troops retreat into nearby woods, machine gun nests at the edge of the woods open fire and decimate the British cavalry. Captain Nichols is killed, but Joey survives, along with Major Stewart and Topthorn. The Major is captured, and the uninjured horses are rounded up for use by the German army. Joey and Topthorn are selected to pull an ambulance, but Topthorn refuses to accept the collar. Joey then shows Topthorn how to accept the collar, and the two horses pull the ambulance back behind the lines. When they arrive at their destination, the horses are cared for by two brothers named Gunther and Michael. As the unit is told to move out, Gunther is instructed to stay with the horse, while Michael, who is just 14, is told to join the rest of the unit. As the unit marches towards the front lines, Gunther saddles Topthorn and Joey and rides up alongside the column, grabbing Michael and pulling him onto his horse. They then continue to ride until they reach a windmill where they stop to rest until nightfall. Before they wake up and continue their journey, they are caught and executed for desertion. A young girl named Emily finds Joey and Topthorn in the fields and takes care of them. Emily is a frail child who lives with her grandfather since her parents died in the war. She wants to ride Joey, but her grandfather is afraid that she will get hurt. However, after the Germans leave the farm, her grandfather gives Emily her mother's saddle, and she rides Joey to the top of a nearby hill. But Emily and Joey don't return, and her grandfather goes after them. Emily's grandfather reaches the top of the hill and sees the Germans taking Joey and Topthorn. Emily is returned home safely, but the Germans take both horses. Emily and her grandfather ask the German officer in charge to leave Joey with them, but he refuses. The officer says that both horses are needed for the war effort and will pull artillery until the war ends, or they die. The horses are then given to Friedrich, who quickly becomes attached to them. One of the horses pulling a huge gun collapses, and when Friedrich tries to bring Joey to replace him, the officer orders him to take Topthorn instead. Friedrich protests that Topthorn is not healthy enough to pull the gun, but the officer insists. Joey races up the hill to take Topthorn's place, and Friedrich takes Topthorn back behind the guns. Joey struggles along with the other horses to pull the huge gun up the hill, and they start firing at the Allies' lines. The scene shifts to the Somme in 1918, where Albert and his fellow villagers are preparing to charge across no man's land to reach the German lines. Albert is the first to reach the German trenches, but he finds no living Germans, only dead ones. 
as he is joined by other British troops, the Germans release gas, and everything goes white. In this scene, Joey, Topthorn, and Friedrich are walking along a wide trench toward the front when Topthorn starts to falter. Friedrich takes them aside, and Topthorn lies down and dies as Joey and Friedrich watch on. Suddenly, the Germans still marching forward turn and run in the other direction, and shortly after, we see a tank that turns toward Friedrich and Joey. Friedrich runs back the way the other Germans have gone, but Joey is trapped from escaping by the tank. As the tank comes closer and closer, Joey looks desperately for a way out and finally gallops straight over the tank and then turns towards the front. The next scene shows Joey at night as he tries to jump across the German trench, but finally tumbles into it where he gallops through the trenches until he is able to get back to the top. Now in no man's land, Joey gallops straight towards the British lines, pulling up barbed wire fencing until he is totally entangled in it. Unable to move, he calms down, and the next morning, both the British and Germans are amazed to see Joey in the middle of no man's land. A British soldier puts his handkerchief on his bayonet and slowly goes over the top to attempt to help Joey. A German soldier fires a warning shot at him, but the rest of the Germans refrain while he makes his way to Joey. When he reaches Joey, he realizes that he should have brought wire cutters and gloves as there is nothing he can do without them. Just then, a German soldier reaches them, and the two of them work together to free Joey. Once he is free, the two soldiers both want him and agree to flip a coin for him. The British soldier wins and takes Joey back to the British lines and to the hospital where Albert is receiving treatment for being blinded by the gas attack. While Albert is being treated, word spreads about the miraculous horse that was caught in barbed wire in no man's land, and the words reach Albert's ears. The British soldier who retrieved Joey from the field asks a doctor to treat him, but the doctor refuses and instructs Sergeant Fry to put the horse down. Just then Albert, hearing the horse, starts calling him with the call he trained Joey to respond to before the war. Everyone stands still, and then as Albert moves towards Joey, everyone clears a path. As they watch, Joey comes towards Albert, and the young man, though his eyes covered, believes he has found his friend again. The sergeant claims that the horse can't possibly be Albert's, but Albert describes Joey's white socked marks above each foot and the white symbol on his forehead. The sergeant then pockets his gun, and several others help Albert take Joey to a nearby stable. The war ends, but Albert is not allowed to take the horse back to England, despite his protests and those of his comrades. Due to regulations, all horses not owned by officers will be sold at auction. On the day of the auction, Albert is surprised to find that his comrades have collected all the money they have and given it to him so he can buy Joey back from the army. At the auction, the local butcher shows up and intends to win Joey for himself. As the bidding between the two goes up, and it seems like Albert will lose, Emily's grandfather appears and outbids both by a wide margin. He further states that he will do whatever he must to win Joey, even if it requires him to sell his farm. After he wins and takes possession of Joey, Joey breaks free and goes over to Albert who brings him back to his grandfather. Albert and the grandfather talk and Albert learns that Joey is all the grandfather has left to remember Emily, who has died. However, the grandfather is unable to bring himself to take Joey away from Albert and gives him back, as that is what Emily would have wanted. The final scene is Albert riding Joey home to the family farm where he embraces his mother and then his father, amid the reddish hues of the setting sun. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know which film you want us to explore next. Take care.